šeit šķiši tie līmenie, da? Thank you all the uh, Indicare sound, uh, Peter, okay? Yep, you hear me okay? Obviously. <laughs> well, good evening everyone, my name is uh, Peter Cosmos, I'm VKE3 BFG, and uh, I'm located in Montana South, in the outer suburbs of Melbourne. Being uh, one of the people who were involved in the initial development of the uh, ATV system down here. It's uh, probably appropriate that I give a very short rundown on uh, on how it all works in Melbourne. Fortunately, uh, as most of you may know, we're uh, <coughs> fortunate to have a, a small mountain range within uh, 35 kilometres of the city centre, and uh, that's called Mount Dandenong, and uh, that's where our repeater is located. And that gives us uh, a 50 mile radius, uh, basically. We get down to uh, Geelong, across Port Phillip Bay. We cover most of Melbourne. Being UHF, of course, um, there are some pockets of uh, full reception. Our transmission power is still currently only 10 watts, so it's a relatively low power uh, transmission, but uh, reasonably high quality. We have resisted the temptation to go to higher power for somewhat political reasons actually. Um, we're anxious to keep our system uh, a very amateur system and uh, yeah, we have used it for the uh, transmission of programs from time to time but uh, um, it's mainly for amateur experimentation really one would have to say in Melbourne. We, uh, we have a site that's located uh, right on the top of Mount Dandenong and there's a uh, <laughs> a bit of mute there. There's a 150 antennas on. Our antenna system is uh, basically phased three element yogis that give us about 180 degree pattern. We don't tran transmit backwards uh, or if you like east from Mount Dandenong because there's very, very little people uh, in that area and certainly I don't think there are any active amateurs in that area. So we're transmitting down towards the Melbourne metropolitan area from Mount Dandenong with, a, with a, uh, a video carrier power of 10 watts and a sound carrier power of 1 watt. We run a separate uh, sound system uh, with a separate sound antenna and that gets around some of the inherent problems associated with uh, uh, intermodulation distortions. So I guess that's about it from me. and. Uh, Hopefully we'll be able to have some, a number of transmissions from a number of the amateurs active in Melbourne. I've also been offered the cooperation of the VK3 BWI broadcast team. Leader Bill Trigg, uh, VK3 PTW, tells me that later in the year it may be possible to put the ATV on full relay, the ATV news on full relay from the facility at Lyndhurst, and, uh, but more about that later. I'll just reset the uh, 2 metre and 70 centimetre repeaters. Uh, I haven't organised the time out on those yet. Uh, happily we'll do that later through the BW, through uh, WIA. In keeping with the changes that are happening within the ATV fraternity, particularly in the hardware area, I propose to enliven the ATV news segment with as much as possible of um, shots of the latest hardware in use, and there is a lot of changes been happening, some quite exciting stuff and some interviews with uh, so as many of the local characters that I, uh, in ATV that I can trap. So I can assure you all of an interesting 1989 in ATV news, as far as I'm concerned anyhow, and one thing that I would like to have is more input from all ATVers and non-ATVers for, for that matter, and what you would like to see in the news, and I would, would welcome prepared items and not prepared items for presentation. That's all I've got for you this morning. We'll see you next Sunday morning at 10.20am, and um, until then, good morning. Up there, TV set, this is only a black and white station. This is economy television, isn't it, Bruce? Well, that, that's right. And, uh, well, I'm proud of one thing, except for the camera, of course, all around me is homemade, and uh, I'm not the most... Uh, technical in this matter, but I suppose over the last 12 years I've slowly built it up to what it is.
and uh, basically we've got uh, a transistorized uh, video processing but we use a 2C39 as the power amp and I'm putting out about uh, 20 watts into a loop yardie that sits up at about 50 feet but uh, my problem is I'm uh, right in the uh, umbrella of the ATV repeater in fact I'm only 250 feet above sea level there's a big mountain approximately five kilometres from me which is sits at about 1600 feet and uh, I have trouble refracting my signal over the top and I think likewise the repeater coming back has trouble uh, coming back to me just on the receive side I have uh, a 32 element phased array with uh, 20 dB of low noise gas set up there just to get uh, a signal strength of about a 3 down into the shack here and uh, I'm even using Heliax cable so uh, that's the situation at this end That's terrific Bruce, uh, I, I gather you're, you're suffering from being too close that's, Yeah that's right, uh, I worked out if you drew a straight line from uh, the transmitter site over the top of this mountain that's in front of me the signal would pass approximately uh, 750 feet overhead. So uh, I rely on the refraction over the top of the hill. So you're getting the backwash or, 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 yeah. or diffraction or whatever. Or refraction or something. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's, it's interesting on a wet night, if it's a cold, wet night, I can get a uh, pretty good signal both ways, both in and out. But uh, nights like this, this is an average night. Uh, 
a microprocessor controlled uh, repeater and that enables us to uh, do a, a few things one of which is we can bring up uh, uh, high quality color bars for test purposes which has a standard test uh, test tone associated with it we do it via uh, a touch tone encoder so I'll just try for the uh, for the color bars excuse me Mike has been busy again put, putting together a non novel sync pulse clamped video modulator that shows promise on, as an alternative way to arrange the, um, uh, the pre-modulation low-level video processing. Mike will be publishing the, the details of this circuitry later. I will not add that I'm using it myself here for the first time this morning uh, on the broadcast and um, um, from my input uh, here it does seem to work rather well. I've also been completing the BATC design colorizer and color bar generator during the week and uh, have concluded that the national chipset, the 1886-1889 chipset, used in the design is a very useful set of devices, capable of really excellent quality in, in the way of video color signal production. Mike uh, has a variation on the BATC arrangement. He's using it to as a pure RGB to power encoder. And the report... You can see here, we uh, did include the audio mute. So that will mute any signal that is incoming without a sound carrier. The modulator is crystal lock to give it. Right, we're now looking at the insides of the transmitter. Up the top here is where the audio actually comes in. That relay there is the uh, transmit relay which is keyed by the incoming sync. A gaggle of transistors down here. That relay there is the audio mute. So the audio line you can see there. If there is no incoming sound carrier, that audio line will be short-circuited so that the transmitter will still be on, but uh, no audio will be fed to the modulator. The modulator is up here, and we better turn this around so that we can see it a little better. You can see the, the crystal there, that's the uh, driving crystal. That's the linearity control. And up there we've just got an audio level control. The actual construction of the driven element will be similar to this. This one is a prototype which I brought to test the antenna design and the Peter's transmitter. We spent a day up on the mountaintop testing this and uh, and to be very effective, we checked it with locals, uh, local ATVs in Melbourne, and uh, found its radiation pattern was appropriate. So, it is what makes amateur radio, uh, amateur radio, so exciting. The versatility that you've got to have to keep up front with it. 
and eventually the driven element will have two studs that are tapped into the plastic and the driven element is supported like so. Right, this is the uh, fill strength meter which is uh, really just a, a tunable receiver. Um, the major tuning is there and the fine tuning is here. There's three bands on it, uh, one for UHF and one and two for the VHF. But it is calibrated in microvolts and uh, and dB, so it is a calibrated a calibrated receiver. And uh, you can see there the signal from the uh, repeater sound transmitter and mic serials is running about a thousand microvolts at the moment. And this is what we use to to set up the array. It's uh, yeah, right down the back end of the backyard, and uh, Mike and I had uh, binoculars on it. We weren't standing beside it. We simply aligned the system using binoculars for uh, for operation. So we're just about ready to go up the mountain now. And uh, well, as you can see, uh, Dave and Mike are up the tower, and the aerials are just about in position. They're in the process of putting new bolts on them. and you can get an idea how high up they are. Oh, we've got to switch the uh, transmitter on. The sound transmitter, and the, we've got the internal color bars on, so we'll see, see what happens. PK 3YOB, PK 3RDB coil. K3YOB, the K3RTV coin. Oh, it is, Oh, okay, Michael, we can. We obviously, obviously just switched the sound transmitter on, don't we? Yeah, I'm coming out back. Yeah, it's just one down and turn down the other one's coming through really well. Oh, okay. Um, is the noise quiet? Yes, yes, very quiet. And I don't back around the noise, except for um, the yeah, local noise. It's fine, very good. Alright, so, okay, um, put the iron onto where the wire joins up. That's it. Hit the joint first, and then run the solder into the hit the iron first, and the solder takes. Okay, so, that's it. the joint that time, And then, that's it. Okay, so, 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 Craft and that's just about all. Over. Two uh, visitors to the Knox West District Jamboree on the air station VK3SCA are Christine Finlay and Lynn Posma. They're both guide leaders and I have them with me now. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask uh, Christine, what uh, group are you from? I'm the Bird One Turner South Guide Group. What about you? Uh, Yes, I'm with, I'm with the same company, and I'm Christine's assistant. What brings you along here today? To join in the 25th celebration of Jamboree of the Air. And uh, do you have any of this sort of equipment in your group? No, we don't. No, that's why we're joining with the Scouts today. And what are your impressions of the, the gear that they have here today? Fantastic, marvellous. There's <laughs> anything like it. The girls have really enjoyed it. It's been marvellous. Did you go on the air? Yes, we did. And where did you... Uh, broadcast to? Um, we picked up a signal in Wellington in New Zealand and two in Western Australia.